Um, I want to specially thank the organizer of this program, especially the set band of um, Remnant Prayer Network. Thank you so much for having me. I do not take it for granted. Uh, the, the theme for the program is fire to take cities. Fire to take cities. And as we all know, that um, it's a two-day program. So for tonight, I want to do divination of terms. So I'm going to look into what fire means. I want us to look at the definition of fire, the characteristics of fire, things we need to know about the fire of God. Then by tomorrow, we'll now go to uh, the dimensions of fire. So under that, we'll now begin to, uh, we'll be able to look into the, you know, the meaning. We'll, we'll be able to look into what it means to take cities. What are cities? What does it mean to take city? So we're going to look at that tomorrow. But for tonight, I want us to focus on fire. Let's know what fire is, the nature of fire, the characteristics of fire. Um, the first thing I want us to note here is fire is God's instrument to cause a change among men. Fire is God's instrument to cause a change among men. Anytime God desires to cause an instant change, he sends his fire. Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. That's the case of Sodom and Gomorrah. When God sent his fire, of course we knew, we all knew what happened. Fire is a catalyst for sacrifice. Fire is a catalyst for sacrifice. The object of sacrifice cannot produce incense that will rise to God without fire. Genesis chapter 22, verse 6. Fire is God's template for an encounter. Fire is God's template for an encounter. The Lord appeared to Moses in the midst of burning bush. So God was using that fire as a template to encounter Moses. So we must understand that fire is God's template for encounter. Fire ignites. Fire ignites. That's why the bush may burn with the fire, yet it will not be consumed. A man that will, you know, a man that is ignited will carry God's fire all over him without being consumed with it. So the, the Moses experience is the experience of a man that, that has been ignited is the narration, a description of the life of a man that has been ignited. So when you see a man that is ignited by, by God, he will carry so much fire from the Lord, yet he will not be consumed by it. Fire makes ready. Fire makes ready. If you eat a meat that has not passed through fire, that can be dangerous to your health because it has not been made ready. Until you carry fire, you are not ready for ministry. Until you carry fire, you are not ready for ministry. Without fire, what you have is raw. But with fire, what you have is cooked. You cannot give your generation something that is raw, except you want to poison them. You need to give them something cooked. And you cannot have something cooked without fire because what cooks is fire. So a man that goes into ministry, anyone who dambles into ministry without the fire of God will be a disaster waiting to happen. Why? Because he will go along with raw things. He will begin to give his generation raw things to it instead of giving them cooked food. And you know what happens when you take in raw meat? So fire makes you ready for ministry. Exodus 12, verse 8. Um, cooking here means checking. Not every doctrine can be swallowed. Check it before digesting it. It takes fire to cook. Meaning it takes fire to check. 
Many people just swallow every doctrine they see. Whatever they see trending, they believe it. Why? Because they like fire. It takes fire to cook. And the word cook there means check. It takes fire to check and know that which is truth. It takes fire to check and know that which is coming from the Spirit of God. Many cannot even check to know what is saved and what is not saved because they lack fire. Fire is God's touch light. When God wants to lead you by his light, he sends his fire before you. When God's fire goes before you, it protects you. And number two, it consumes anyone trying to stand against you. Exodus 13 verse 21. You can see that in the case of the Israelites. When God sent the pillar of fire ahead of them in the night. If your offerings are, you know, if the offerings, you know, you know, for your offerings before God to be acceptable, it must carry fire. No offerings to God will be acceptable by God without fire. Exodus 29 verse 25. Fire is needed for work. Fire is work. No one can be called, you know. No one can be called a fire brand if their life lacks fire. To be working is to be fireful. Fire is the fuel for doing spiritual work. You want to work for God, but you don't have fire. It's not possible. You want to take your generation, but you don't have fire. It's not possible. You want to take cities, but you don't have fire. It's not possible. Fire is the fuel for working for God. Until you have the fuel, you will only desire the work, but you lack what it takes to do it. It's not about desiring. You need to have what it takes to do what you desire. Until you have the spiritual fuel, which is the fire, you cannot do the work of the kingdom. To kindle fire is to start working, because fire is work. Exodus 35 verse 3. Fire is sustained by orderliness. If you see a burning altar, you don't just throw your wood into it to make it burn. The wood must be positioned orderly to make the fire burn. If you want the fire to burn consistently, then the wood must be positioned orderly. Leviticus chapter 1 verse 7. The wood will be laid orderly in the fire and the meat to be roasted must also be laid on the wood in an orderly manner. Then Leviticus chapter 1 verse 8. There is an attitude you must have if you want to profit from the fire of God. You can see God's fire and still go back the same way you came without experiencing a positive change if you are not orderly. Maintaining the attitude of orderliness is what qualifies you for what the fire of God can bring. Leviticus chapter 1 verse 12. Sweet smell is what god wants to get from every sacrifice that is made unto him but we must understand that this sweet smell is usually eating though the object of sacrifice has a sweet smell but it is usually eaten in the object it is until fire descends that the eden smell in the sacrifice manifests so your potential will not manifest until you are fire branded. Fire commands attention. Fire commands result. Fire is what brings out God's potential in you. Leviticus chapter 1 verse 9. The impact of God's fire on the lives of a believer is holiness. When that fire comes on you, it burns off every particle of sin and self. Holiness is not attainable without fire. When a man is refined by God's fire, the holiness nature of God suddenly begins to come out from him. That's the point where the supernatural becomes natural. 
you cannot get to that point in your life where you do you know you know that point where you do supernatural things naturally and natural things supernaturally when you lack fire it takes fire to make that a possibility leviticus chapter 2 verse 3 nothing is qualified to be called an offering before god until it is clothed with fire fire defines what you bring to the lord no matter how expensive your gifts may be if it lacks fire then it can't be called an offering fire is the core part of an offering leviticus chapter 3 verse 5 fire is god's trademark one of the signs to show that your personal altar is recognized by god is that it has fire burning on it the presence of fire on your on your altar symbolizes the presence of god in your life when fire is on your altar it means god is present in your life leviticus chapter 6 verse 13 offerings are not only you know offerings are not only peculiar to god you can give offerings to devils and you can give offerings to people but if who you want to give offerings to is the lord then it must be branded with fire that's the only pass mark leviticus chapter 7 verse 5 an altar you know on an altar fire burns to purify and refine while you know on other platforms fire may burn to consume the function of fire when it is on an altar is different from the function when it is not on an altar so if you are standing on your altar with the lord when the fire of god descends upon you it will purify you it will refine you many people they cry for fire oh fire fall on me oh fire fall on me my question is this where are you standing if you don't stand on your altar and you call for fire you will be consumed by the fire <laughs> it's not enough to call for the fire of god where are you standing don't call for fire when you are not standing on your altar fire only purifies and refines on altar you must understand that leviticus chapter 10 verse 2 calling for fire when you don't have an altar can be dangerous because if you must be refined and purified then it must descend on an altar leviticus chapter 8 verse 32 the evidence to show that an altar carries fire are the cause of fire cause of fire are the result of a burning altar leviticus chapter 16 verse 12 fire is god's instrument for judging wickedness the wickedness of the wicked will not come to an end until there is an intervention of fire from the law leviticus chapter 20 verse 14 what burns on the altar of god is not just fire but godly fire it's not just any kind of fire you must ensure that what you are bringing is a godly fire what you are you know kindling is a godly fire a godly fire is that kind of fire that is made according to divine prescription you know we have two types of fire strange fire and godly fire when you do things according to divine instruction you will kindle a godly fire but when you do things outside of god's instruction you kindle a strange fire and you remember what happened to nadab and abiu in the bible they kindled a strange fire and they were struck to death immediately strange fire can provoke strange response from the lord anytime you present to god what was not given to you by god you are bringing up a strange fire anytime you present to god what was not given to you by god you are kindling a strange fire a thief should not try paying tithes from his stolen money that action won't make god overlook his sins but instead it will bring god's anger 
faster upon him because he is starting a strange fire. Numbers chapter 3, verse 4. This is why Nadab and Abihu died untimely. Prayer regulates fire. It can start it and it can also end it. It can also determine how long the fire will last. The duration, occurrence, and the end point of fire can be determined by prayer. Numbers 11 verse 2. Here, you know, in that scripture, the, the people sinned against God and Moses and God sent down fire to consume them. So Moses went to the Lord and prayed and the fire stopped. Meaning that, you know, prayer can start fire, prayer can maintain fire, and prayer can stop fire. How? Let me tell you. The moment you stop praying, your fire stops burning. Anything you get by prayer will be sustained by prayer. So if your altar is erected by prayer, you will need to sustain it by prayer. Not just prayer, not just anyhow prayer, but consistent prayer. Now let me ask you this question. What is an offering? <laughs> Many of us think offering is that thing you hold in your hand, that money you have squeezed in your hand, and you are dropping it reluctantly in the offering box. Of course, no. So what is an offering? Offering is defined in the book of Numbers chapter 15, verse 25. An offering is a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. That's offering. If you like, come with billions. If that thing is not made by fire, if there's no fire on it, it will not go to the Lord. You have wasted your resources. No wonder many people give and they don't get reward. Why? They are trying to make a sacrifice to God and yet there's no fire. What God checks in what you are bringing is the fire content. You must understand that. Numbers chapter 15 verse 25. Fire reserves and fire preserves. When fire descends on something, something that has a godly content, it will consume the carnal part of it and reserve the godly portion. This reserve portion will also need fire to be preserved. Numbers 18 verse 9. Fire is a spiritual grease that eradicates spiritual frictions. These frictions are the product of demonic arrows shot at us, but with the fire of God in us, we can nullify the effect completely. What happens to you when spirits, trained spirits, shoot their arrows at you? What happens to you? If you don't have the fire of God, you become a victim. May the Lord give you grace. May your altar keep burning. May you be fire branded in the name of Jesus. Receive a testimony of fire in the name of Jesus. I come against everything called lukewarmness in your life in the name of Jesus. Starting from now, your fire begins to burn for Jesus. It burns forever in the name of Jesus. Once again, thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. I'm really grateful for, you know, for having me. You know, thanks to everyone that's a part of the program, the executives. Special, you know, my special thanks to uh, Bro Isaiah, the set man of um, Remnant Prayer Network. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so honored, so grateful to be you know, for the privilege to bless the people of God. Thank you so much. God bless you.